Started. My name is uh, Brecht Machiels. Um, a little bit more about me. I'm uh, from Belgium. I'm uh, about 30 years old. And I've been enjoying computers since a very long time, as you can see in the picture. Uh, it's with the Commodore 64, by the way. Uh, I've obtained a PhD degree in microelectronics. However, I haven't really been uh, practicing electronics anymore since I graduated. Uh, I've been programming in C and C++ and Python and some other languages also for uh, uh, professionally and for fun. Although in the case of C++, perhaps uh, the fun part doesn't really apply. So what is Rhino type? It's a document typesetter in the style of LaTeX. Uh, who here does not know uh, LaTeX or has not used it before? Okay, a couple of people. But uh, it's not necessary to understand this talk, so uh, you should be fine. Uh, basically, it takes a input document in a structured text format. So for now, this is uh, limited to restructured text and uh, Sphinx documents. Uh, and the difference with LaTeX is that the style uh, and content are more uh, strictly separated. I'll come back to that in a couple of uh, slides. Uh, so taking this restructured input file, um, you can style the document elements using a style sheet, which is similar to CSS. And you can choose to typeset uh, the document in a number of uh, formats, such as a book as a template uh, or an article based on the template you choose or provide yourself. And the output is a PDF format. It's also possible to add other backends so that other uh, formats are supported in the future. I'm thinking of uh, SVG or scalable vector graphics uh, that might be interesting to display in a browser. Then onto my motivation for starting uh, RhinoType. Uh, like you have uh, used LaTeX before and generally it has been a pretty good experience. Uh, you provide it with uh, content and it uh, takes care of formatting it in a rather nice way. However, there is also quite a number of problems with LaTeX. This is uh, due to its age mostly, I think, because it doesn't rely on modern uh, technologies. Uh, typical complaints about LaTeX are the crypting warning and error messages, as those you can see over there, like undefined control sequences, then followed by so the name of some uh, weird uh, tech macro, and uh, you have no hope of finding out what, uh, what the problem is. So this takes uh, a lot of time to fix these uh, errors. The tech macro language is uh, not very accessible. It's uh, very different from modern uh, programming languages. So if you want to extend or uh, customize a style in LaTeX, you need to be quite uh, the expert in tech. Lastly, it's also a very large and complex uh, system. It's not very transparent. If you want to install LaTeX, it's uh, for the tech live distribution, which is the default distribution. Nowadays, it's a two, uh, two gigabyte download. Uh, and installed, it uh, unpacks to quite a bit more. I think there's also some smaller distributions, but then you often run into problems with uh, missing packages, so that's not really a good solution. Uh, maybe I should ask uh, if any other people here kind of hate LaTeX, even though they have to use it now and then? Okay, that's good, that's good. Gives me some confidence here. So, uh, we had that. My goals in the development of RhinoType uh, is, it to be, is for it to be as capable as LaTeX or eventually even uh, more capable. But uh, it's very important for it to be very easy to use. Uh, these problems I mentioned in the last slide, I want to uh, try and fix these. So it should be easy to style documents and I hope to fix this uh, by uh, presenting the CSS-like uh, style sheets. I think they're a good match for styling documents in general. And uh, document templates should also be easy to modify or con uh, configure at least, or it should also be easy to uh, write new ones from scratch. Uh, RhinoType is written in pure Python. Currently it's written in Python 3. Uh, I might do a backport to Python 2, but uh, I'm not sure about that yet. And I try to minimize dependencies. So currently it depends only on docutils uh, for parsing restructured text. Uh, but if you're using Sphinx, you have that dependency installed anyway. And it also depends on a pure Python uh, PNG library if you want to install, uh, include PNG images in your document. The current status, I've already shown this slide during the lightning talk, so 
There was a first release a couple of weeks ago. It's a kind of early beta, you could call it. So it contains most of uh, the features that are also offered by LaTeX. One major exception there are equations, but these are uh, definitely on the to-do list. And also important is that there's uh, very few documentation uh, on it. However, there's a README, so if you want to try uh, playing with uh, Rhino type, I rec recommend you start with the README and that should get you started, uh, along with this presentation, of course. Uh, furthermore, I need to do lots of testing, like write many using unit tests and uh, fix the bugs that pop up. I will release a new version soon that will probably be uh, early next week. It features nearly complete Sphinx support. For example, it renders the uh, Sphinx's own documentation, which is a large document, and uses most of uh, Sphinx's features. And it also comes with a prettier style sheet. So in the first couple of slides, I will present how you can use uh, Rhino type as a kind of end on an end user level. Uh, and afterwards, we'll dive a little bit more into the details, uh, uh, looking at the style sheet mechanism, for example. So if you look at Rhino type in the center as an engine, we feed it an input file that is a structured text document. So for now that's restructured text or Sphinx uh, documentation project. Uh, other backends could be added, uh, just takes a lot of work, I suppose. In the case of Markdown, that uh, work is limited. Uh, but for DocBook, uh, I think that's a very broad specification, but uh, I believe it's fairly uh, it's used often by publishers, so I think that's a good uh, front end to add. The structured text, it can refer to images. These can be in PDF format or in uh, PNG or JPEG format. So these, are, these bitmaps are uh, more or less included as is in the PDF, so they don't require any uh, uh, long processing time. So these get uh, fed to RhinoType, and then RhinoType looks for some style sheets and document templates to determine the style of the documents. Uh, these are both in, uh, these are basically both uh, Python source files. I might provide a text-based uh, layer for style sheets in the future to uh, ensure security, uh, but that is not yet present. Uh, and of course, we need some fonts to render uh, text. And all, base, all currently widely supported font uh, technologies are supported, including for uh, open type and true type. And out comes a nice PDF if everything goes well. So who is not familiar with restructured text? Okay, so that makes things easier also. So here's an example on the right. So it's basically plain ASCII text and it's uh, structured as the name says. So you can see two sections and then there's an uh, enumer enumerated list with a bullet list uh, inside of it. A very important feature of restructured text is that it's, it is in fact in extensible. So you can add new roles and directives and you can use this uh, contrast to LaTeX, where the input file is a source, a text source file. Uh, you can basically program anything. In Rhino type, you're kind of, uh, I shouldn't say stuck, but uh, uh, with this restructured text format, so you cannot program in it, but you can still extend it. And on the Rhino type side, you can implement uh, a corresponding part, so in, a, in some sense, it's still uh, programmable and the content and style is more separated, so you're kind of forced to make this separation, and I believe this uh, will lead to a better or an, and a cleaner document. And even if that sounds like more work than in LaTeX, I think it will be much easier to do this uh, in Rhino type than trying to figure out how to do something in uh, LaTeX using the tech language. So like I said, uh, there is also a Sphinx uh, front end provided. Uh, Anyone who, who's not familiar with Sphinx? Okay, looking good. Um, so you all know this. Uh, it's used for larger document projects, uh, for like example, uh, API documentation, but you can also use it for books and manuals that are not uh, related to source code. Uh, and you can render to HTML, to LaTeX, and then to PDF uh, or EPUB. And now with RhinoType, you can render directly to PDF uh, using nothing but uh, Python and the Python packages. 
So I'll show a little demonstration. Uh, first, I'll render a small restructured text file using the command line tool that is included with RhinoType. And I'll also look at how you can uh, compile a Sphinx documentation project using RhinoType. So this is just a uh, small restructured text file. There are some images in the images directory. Open the restructured text file. So this should look familiar to most of you. Here I have defined a custom role for uh, typesetting acronyms. This will be match matched in the Rhino type style sheet. Uh, so these will be displayed as small capitals. Then we have a paragraph with some inline uh, styling an inline image also, and here we have a, maybe I should make it a little smaller. So a, a paragraph with a custom class assigned using the class uh, directive. We will also use this to uh, uh, apply special formatting in RhinoType. This is of course something you normally would not do in a normal document, this is just to display uh, the styling uh, features of RhinoType. A right lined paragraph, some more of uh, these here. And then we have some typical body elements like lists, uh, field lists, option lists, uh, a code block, an indented paragraph, a table, and some images. So we'll see how that gets rendered. So the Rhino tool is available. At this moment, it uh, only accepts a single argument, but uh, uh, I will add some more so you can choose uh, the style sheet to apply and perhaps also choose paper uh, page orientation and uh, maybe uh, configure page margins if you want. So you can ignore this uh, line for now, I will not explain this. Uh, but this line shows the error, error uh, reporting or warnings in uh, RhinoType. So it shows uh, the input file that is uh, the cause of the warning and the line number. So it points you to the exact location of where, where the cause of the problem is. Uh, in this case, there's a very long line in a code block because these code blocks are not uh, line wrapped it flows into the margin of the page. And it also displays that this occurs on page three of the rendered document. I believe this is a nice improvement over a LaTeX. Uh, the second line, this indicates that the first rendering pass uh, has finished uh, because page references or cross references have not yet converged uh, because in the first pass you, are not, uh, you don't know how many pages the document will uh, consist of. So we need to do another page if uh, this reference is included somewhere. So after the second pass, the output is written. And have a look at the results. So we have a, oh, a title with a subtitle, the author is there. Then we have the first uh, section which is automatically numbered by a rhino type. You can choose to number this in different ways using numer uh, Roman numerals or uh, just uh, A, B, C, D. Then we have some inline uh, styles such as uh, italic for emphasized text, uh, bold for strongly emphasized text. We have some uh, monospace text for literals. Uh, we can have subscripts, superscripts, uh, inline images as here. And hyphenation is also supported automatically. You can even, uh, on a sub-paragraph basis, so parts of paragraphs, you can uh, set the language and the maximum amount of, or the minimum amount of uh, characters to keep together when hyphenating words. Uh, and it uses uh, OpenOffice or LibreOffice hyphenation dictionaries to perform this hyphenation. Um, Cross-references are transformed into links in the PDF document. Uh, it's interesting to note that restructured text supports Unicode, so you can write in many, many languages. And since RhinoType is written in Python 3, it's internally all Unicode. So uh, 
I have to say I haven't tested this thoroughly yet, but I, yesterday I tried with uh, this Vietnamese text and it seems to map uh, well to, what, uh, to my example that I've seen. Here we have a left-aligned paragraph, so it's ragged on the right side. We have a right-aligned paragraph. These are center-aligned. Uh, there's support for kerning and ligatures, which can be turned on and off, uh, as in here. So don't worry about that if you don't know what it means, but it basically makes text uh, more readable. So in the case of AV here, by default, there's a rather large uh, space in between, and kerning information in the font uh, makes this uh, placed closer together so it's easier to read. Uh, like in a title, it could occur that these are like two words, while in fact it's one, it's one word, so this helps readability. Uh, similarly, we have ligatures, so FFI, for example, is contracted into a single glyph uh, that is supposedly easier to read. Oh yeah, in the top paragraph, we also have a footnote reference, and the footnote can be seen on the bottom of the page. Then we have a local table of contents with page references on the rest, uh, on the right, and they are also um, uh, hyperlinks. And we have the typical body elements like the lists, field lists, option lists. Some block level elements, so here is the paragraph that generated the warning. So the text is flowing into the, into the margin. We have an indented paragraph, and then tables. Um, we can have row spanning and uh, column spanning cells, as in HTML. And the width of the table and the columns, the indivi individual columns, are sized automatically based on their contents. This is something that is missing from the Sphinx LaTeX builder, I believe. I suppose that there's a LaTeX package that fixes this, but uh, I'm not sure if that's uh, possible to use with Sphinx. Then we have a section with some images. So this image is simply kind of inline images uh, image. And after this paragraph, there is a floating uh, image or figure inserted, and this gets floated to the top of the page, as you can see here, along with a caption. And then finally, we have some admonitions that are styled differently based on their uh, type. I'll go to the Sphinx uh, demos. So this is basically the Sphinx uh, Git repository checked out. If we move into the doc directory, oh, we're already there. Uh, I've made some changes to conf.py to configure a Rhino type. So first, we need to include the Sphinx uh, builder that's included with Rhino type in the extension list. And we need to specify this variable to instruct RhinoType what to render exactly. So this is very similar to uh, uh, configuration variables for other backends uh, of Sphinx. So we will render contents.rst, which contains basically all uh, documentation. Uh, we will output to Sphinx.pdf by specifying Sphinx here. We specify a document title and author. And the following uh, part configures uh, custom headers and footers for the document. So the headers and footers, they each consist out of three tab stops. So one on the left, one in the center, one on the right. So if we add a tab uh, element, uh, this moves the cursor to the middle tab stop. So this text will be in the header, will be centered. Uh, and for the footer, we on the left, we insert the page number forward two tabs, so we end up on the right of the footer, and that's where we uh, insert the chapter uh, description, which is simply the section number followed by the section title of the level one or top level section. We can also configure the style sheet, page size, orientation, and uh, configure margins of the page uh, for the Sphinx uh, project. Uh, we can also configure the number of columns to use to typeset the document. So I will not render this uh, real time because it takes a little bit too long, at least for this presentation. So 
So this is using the book template, so it comes with a title page, followed by a blank page, and then the table of contents. Uh, this looks similar like, like, like the one in the previous document. Uh, and this goes down to two levels in the section uh, three. It's a longer document. You can see at the bottom the page, num uh, page numbers are in Roman, uh, small case numerals. And then for the body part of the text, uh, you can see the custom header and footer we have defined. So page, on the page number on the left and section description on the right. And the style more or less uh, was copied from the LaTeX uh, style file used by Sphinx. So continuing with the presentation, uh, I quickly mentioned SiteProcPy. Site this is a sister project to RhinoType. It's basically a CSL processor, and CSL is a standardized XML format to describe the formatting of citations and bibliographies. Uh, it comes with, or a lot of styles are available, so you probably don't need to write your own style if you uh, are writing a document with uh, citations. It parses uh, BibTeX databases, so you can use these, uh, and it can output the formatted citations and bibliography as HTML with structured text or uh, using the internal Rhino type uh, representation. This is not yet uh, usable from within uh, uh, restructured text or Sphinx, but uh, this should be a very small step. So this is an example of how citations and uh, references lists could be formatted by SiteProcPy. So this extends this uh, schema. So we can add references and SiteProcPy handles the formatting of uh, those. Now diving a little bit deeper into the internals, we we'll look at the style sheets. For this, uh, to understand this, you need to know how document elements are represented. These are basically uh, Python instances of flowable classes. Uh, so we have flowables, uh, such as a paragraph of an Im or an image, and then we have inline images, which uh, make up a paragraph. Uh, after that, I will discuss the style sheets and how flowables are linked to a style definition. So as I said, uh, flowable can be, for example, a paragraph, a paragraph adapts to the available width that is provided by the document template, uh, and they are flowed onto the page. So that's... Uh, term that is often used in this context. Uh, images, for example, they don't adapt to the available width, or generally not, uh, at least. They can horizontally align themselves within the available space. And flowables form a tree that together form a document tree, such as uh, is the case in HTML also, so that should be intuitive. Here we have a title uh, paragraph, so it has a special title style. Uh, so this paragraph functions as the title of the document. Then we have two top-level sections, uh, and the top, first top-level section has two subsection with some additional uh, uh, flowables inside of them. Inline elements, uh, for example, this short paragraph with nested styling is also represented as a tree. Uh, I will skip over that quickly. So style sheets, like I said, they are very similar to CSS. You first select the document elements you want to style, and you select them based on their place in the document tree, their style attribute, which is similar to the ID and class attributes in CSS, uh, or you can select based on any other attribute or any combination of these three. Uh, style sheets are plain Python source files. I also managed that, uh, mentioned that before. Uh, we'll have a look at an example now. So suppose we want to select the, the paragraphs that are part of a list item here, uh, but we don't want to select this one. We make use of a context selection, so we only select list items that are a direct child, uh, sorry, we only select paragraphs that are a direct, direct child of list item, or we can also use this selector, the Python ellipsis uh, keyword. It represents any number or any number of levels of uh, flowables, 
uh, and in this case, it simply matches the list item. We can match based on the style attribute as for the title paragraph using the like uh, class method. And we can match on arbitrary attributes. For example, level two section headings, we can select uh, like this. We limit the selection of the sections by uh, passing the level at, uh, argument to the like method. I'll skip the next one because I'm running out of time. Uh, there's some limitations to CSS, I think. Uh, so I added another level of indirection. I split up style sheets between a style matcher and a style sheet. A style matcher basically collects all the selectors and maps these to style names. And these style names can then in a style sheet be mapped to a style definition. Uh, that means that single style matcher, because these are often the same, all these selectors, the same for multiple documents, can be reused by multiple style sheets. I think maybe this might make less sense for HTML, but I think for a document processor, uh, this is a good fit. Uh, RhinoType also supports uh, variables in the style sheets to avoid duplication. This is a problem that is often uh, not, uh, or this is a missing feature from CSS that is uh, often uh, complained about. And we can also inherit from uh, one style to, again, avoid duplication. So let's have a look at the style matcher and style sheets. So we define, we create a, create a new style matcher. Um, so for example, we select a style text with the emphasis style and we assign it to the emphasis uh, style uh, name. The same for nested line blocks, which is, uh, should be more or less self-explanatory. And we use this matcher or refer to it in a style sheet we create. And over there, we map uh, style elements to each of the different style names. So emphasized text is uh, represented using italicized text, and nested line blocks uh, are indented on the, li on the left. Variables can be used uh, if we reuse a single uh, value for multiple styles. For example, fonts is a good uh, example of that. So we define a variable here, IEEE family, uh, which collects a number of fonts. And we can use this as follows in a style definition. Uh, note that you can also refer to attributes uh, of this, uh, or, or of the value that the variable references. You have inheritance, suppose we have defined a style for uh, headings, for numbered headings. Uh, we often also have a unnumbered uh, heading style for table of contents title, for example. In this case, we want to base this on the default heading style, and we can simply overwrite uh, one or more of the style attributes, as is uh, the case here. So all other attributes are simply uh, the same as for the standard heading style. You can also extend this style sheet. So if, for example, you use a standard style sheet that is shipped with RhinoType, uh, and you want to make some changes, you can simply uh, inherit. Uh, additionally, you can add a uh, new matcher. So for example, for the acronym uh, role uh, that was visible in the demonstration, you can define a new matcher. Then you can create an inherited uh, or a style sheet that is matched uh, based on the previous style sheet and also refer to the new matcher. And now we can define a style for the acronym uh, role, restructured text role. So we set small capitals to true in this case. We can also override styles that were present in the base style sheet like this. So we change the font weight to bold uh, additionally. And we can change variables that will also have effect on all styles that use this, variables, uh, this variable in the base style sheet. So here we replace all fonts with uh, some others. Then a small note about performance. So the Sphinx documentation, I uh, forgot to update this, but with the new style sheet, it's about 230 pages. And this takes about 70 seconds to render from scratch. So this takes uh, two passes if the cache file is in place, so the document has been rendered already, 
um, it takes only about 40 seconds. I think this is not too bad for a Python document uh, processor. However, I still looked into spinning it up a little bit. That would be nice. Um, so I tried uh, Cyton. Unfortunately, I didn't uh, get to make a big speed up with that. I think it, this is due to the fact that I'm basically uh, doing lots of things with lists and dictionaries instead of tight loops, uh, number crunching. Also tried PyPy. Fortunately, it was twice as slow as uh, C Python. Um, the Python uh, PyPy developers are not sure what the cause of this is, but uh, I've talked to Fijal yesterday about it, and we'll have a look at it uh, during the sprints. I should mention the license. So my intention is to keep RhinoType free for non-commercial use. So open source projects uh, can use it to generate uh, documentation. Uh, I'm thinking about offering a separate license for commercial use, but I have to determine the details about this. Uh, it's a very complicated matter, I understand. So for more information, please note the spelling of uh, RhinoType. Uh, it could help you to say that it spells Python backwards. And please uh, look at these URLs for more information and downloads. Maybe we still have some time for some questions. Um, any questions? Hey. First, hello. It's just an amazing project. I love Lotix and so on. I have actually two questions, but since CSS is like boring, I will only ask about math, about formulas. So um, your lightning talk mentioned, if I'm not mistaken, that there is no support for formulas, right? Mathematical like equations. Yeah, it's not supported at the moment. No. Okay, so there is a project in JavaScript world called Katex, you know? Uh, which one is it? Katex, Katex, K-A-Tech. Oh, no, I don't know that. So I it's know like a JS big JS JavaScript, JS. sorry? I know about JS math or something. But uh, that's that's another one. So yeah. Katech, they are like explicitly dedicated to mathematical equations and everything related. But it's in JavaScript, so it's just like a hint. Thanks. Okay, thanks. Hi. Um, how, well, I guess you did try to compare with regular LaTeX for the same document, um, the same content, I mean, because it seemed the compilation was horribly slow compared to proper LaTeX. It is uh, quite slow compared to LaTeX, I think, yes. So that's why I tried to, to look at PyPy for uh, speeding up. Uh, however, for small documents, uh, this is not a problem. Um, but I'll definitely look into speeding, uh, speeding the rendering up a little more. And did you compare with uh, Sphinx? Is it the same speed as uh, Sphinx? Sphinx LaTeX uh, render? Or? Yeah, the, did you compare uh, the compiling with Sphinx? To, to well, any, anyone, I don't know, the, the fastest. But the but make, PDF, make PDF for Sphinx? And uh, PDF no, I, with Rhino type? No, I have not uh, compared that. Um, I would like to know how far along are you with the idea of rendering this to SVG? Oh, I haven't started that. It's just an idea. Any more questions? Which um, actual text processing library are you using internally? Because to do all the paragraph formatting and all the, uh, the page styling or typesetting effectively, um, with what library are you using? Did you re-implement everything that is in tech? Uh, yeah. So everything is pure Python. I do not rely on external uh, libraries except for docutils or uh, the PNG library. Any more questions? Hi. Um, 
Do you support or will you support um, absolute placement constraints? So if a box needs to be placed at an uh, a exact position on the page, or maybe if you have a table uh, where the, the cells may not be broken, uh, if it's um, multi-page? Yeah, so I have no, there's nothing in place for absolute placement as of yet. Uh, this could be added, but I'm not sure how that would interact with the rest of the elements. Uh, as for tables, you can set the constraint of how many uh, rows to keep together at a minimum. So if you can just render like two rows on a, on a, on a page, uh, it will skip to the next one if you have specified like four. Any more questions? I have a question about testing. So since it's all related to visuals, how do you automate testing your stuff? Thanks. I've, I've done very little testing up to now because um, I've been constantly refactoring also. Not sure if that's a good excuse, but uh, uh, yeah, I've, I, I'm also a bit worried uh, about how to do this testing. I guess I will have to mock the backend and uh, or maybe it will, will just be limited to regression testing that I know which is the good location, just make sure it doesn't, uh, doesn't change. Uh, thanks for talking. Um, I tried the line type with uh, Japanese language techies and, uh, oh that, and uh, line type except the uh, cause exception. Yeah. And how, uh, how do you plan to support it as a merge byte language? Uh, yeah, Unicode should be a good part of that, but uh, I'm sure there's, there's more uh, to do there. Uh, of course, you need to also make sure that you have fonts that uh, contain the necessary glyphs. Uh, but this is something I could uh, probably use some help from since I do not, uh, do not uh, read or write Japanese or many other languages. Any more questions? Hi. How do you handle images and is there some sort of scaling mechanism uh, in Rhino type? Yeah, you can like specify uh, uh, to scale it to the total available width or uh, specify an absolute width uh, just in like points or in centimeters. Okay, any more questions? Mm. No more questions, no? Okay. Uh, thank you very much for your talk and it has been really interesting. <laughs>